Hi guys, Tracy from Tracy's Art and Craft again. How are you all? I hope you're all doing well. So I'm a little bit disorganised tonight, just bear with me. I'm doing this sort of the night before. My desk is a little bit messy from the painting. I messed up my craft mat already and you know, all that good stuff. <laughs> So today I have um, some of my very own papers that I'm going to be working with. Now, I just want to say that you can pop down there. They will all be linked down in the description box. Um, if you wanted to buy them, of course you can buy them. Um, if you are a member to my Buy Me A Coffee site, um, you get them for free. They're up there for free. I have got them in multiple... Um, different files just because they take smaller files to buy me a coffee site <coughs> sorry excuse me but they are up there for free if you're a member um, or if you wanted to use somebody else's papers you could go and do that if you wanted to just use some scrapbooking paper that you happen to have anything like that then that's fine I'm going to be working with all A4 paper and I'm going to show you the kits that I'm working with to start our beginner journal it's gonna be a super easy journal guys if you are right at the beginning and you're too scared to just jump in and do it this is great for you if you are not quite at the beginning but you've been doing it for a little while still a little unsure but you want to make up something quick and easy as a gift this is great for you same as if you are you know experienced this will bring you straight back to the beginning but it might be a really quick and easy gift for some a young person maybe or you know I know the Americans I think it's in May they have Mother's Day coming up so maybe this will be good for you we've had our Mother's Day might make a nice Easter gift though as it can be put together quite quickly I'm going to be doing this over a week hopefully hopefully it's going to be just a week I mean it won't be every day of the week so just to prove to you this can be put together very quickly at least the bare bones of it extra decoration and things might only take an extra day so yeah this will be a lovely gift so I'm just going to get on with showing you the um, papers first of all <clears throat> so the three kits I'm using today are called Enchanted Pages, Enchanted Ephemera and Marble Papers and I have each of them in my store and they're the ones that I happen to be using but of course do feel free to use whatever you want so we're going to start off with the Enchanted Papers and I can't remember how many you get in a kit but I do believe I've printed it off twice so I'm just going to show you what we have here so the first page let's start the first page and then I'll put them to the side is this one um, if you have got borderless it does print borderless um, I happen to not have borderless my printer doesn't do that so So yeah, these are absolutely beautiful papers. These ones are the more plainer papers. You could use them on the back. You could use them in other journals. They've got lovely sort of autumnal colours to them as well as spring. Um, so you could use them separately. So that's the last of the plain pages. Then we have the ones which are to be folded and they have got the white line down the middle, but that is fine once that is folded in. Um, you won't see that, but if you didn't like that, you could just pop a little bit of ink down the center there and ink that to the color that you wish. I've left it white for now, just to keep it simple. But of course it doesn't have to be white. But once this gets done, you won't see it. It's got a beautiful fairy here. So it's got lots of magical creatures, as you can see. So we've got the unicorn in the corner. This lovely woodland magical sort of spirit creature. And then we have the beautiful unicorns and the bluish coloured forest. And here we have a fairy tree with a little fairy sitting on a little mushroom or toadstool and here we've got pinky hues with the little fairy so this could be a lovely colourful one and this is the uh, second part of the kit uh, the second um, set that I printed off so that's those but also on the backs I have printed the marble papers 
Now, the marble papers is in two sets, two different separate files. I've used both printing up here. Um, so when, when you come to buy them, you buy them one, you buy one lot, you pay for one lot, but you'll get two files when you pay for it. That's what I mean. Um, if you are on my membership page, you have to download both of the files. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you guys. If you have any problems, just let me know. But we've got a whole array of colours here. So these marble papers, if you're using them for this, you know, they go so well because there's such an array of colours. But if you're using them for, say, your normal junk journaling, when you because you're going to print them off more than once, you know you've got that file there to use. These pages would make lovely backing papers. They would make, make lovely card backgrounds. But if you were to use them as backing papers, you could choose the colour that would most suit the kit that you're using and then just print that off how many, how many pages you know you need so you can say you're doing a purple one for instance you could go for this paper to back all your papers in or this one or if you're doing a bluey green color one you could use this one to back all your papers in so they're really versatile and because it doesn't matter which way up they go you could use them for such a massive array of things i absolutely love this pastel color here really love that and this one this is one of my favorites as well and then we've got a slightly brighter one there so those are just some of the marble papers you get 23 papers all together to print off and then i have the enchanted ephemera now if you are buying this you pay for just one pack and you get all the files if you are a member and you're getting them for free um, I've put the files separate. So first of all, we've got the card files. And I have to put them separate just because there's not enough room to go around uh, to put them on. They, they take a smaller file size. Of course, you can make your own journaling cards, but some people like to um, print off journaling cards to make things easier. And like I say, this is a really beginner one, so... So this one is part of the pockets, uh, pockets for the kit. So we get these lovely tucks here. You've got eight tucks all together. These little, these are like going to be fold up little journaling notebooks. I'm going to show you how to make, and they go inside these little pockets here. So you get four little like notebooks, and they go into these pockets. And then we have these slightly larger pockets here. And then you also get, if you're a member, you'll have the tags to go with the kit. And these are the tags. So we have this set of smaller tags here. And then we have two of the larger tags. I love large tags. I just do. They're moorish and yummy. Some people prefer smaller ones. That's why I always include smaller ones. So. And there we go. So these are what we're going to be using. Today we are going to be using some of the papers. And we are going to be making the cover. So let's get started on that, shall we? First of all, I'm going to pull out my music book. Now, if you haven't got a music book, a little tip for you is you can get sheet music online for free to download and print so if you are printing you might as well get yourself some book page as well um, just search for free printable book um free printable music page and um yeah you'll get that so what i'm going to do is i am going to be collaging on this now, the first thing I want to mention is if you're collaging and you're using just glue stick, you might want to add on a little bit of sewing, okay, just to keep everything a little bit together. If you're not, you could always go around the edges, so you could glue stick and then go around the edges of your paper with tacky glue, or you could use tacky glue or Mod Podge, um, and that would hold it just a little bit more. In fact, 
tacky glue or mod podge would actually give you a little bit of strength if you wanted to use it i am i might be sewing this one just because just because i haven't actually got a reason i'm just going to be sewing this one so first thing we want to do is a little bit of simple um collaging now i have some paper pages here that didn't print out any marble background there you go they didn't print out any marble background so i'm going to be using that here i've got a tearing ruler now a tearing ruler you can buy them this one what i happen to have done i don't know if you're going to be able to see that but what i happen to have done is i wanted a tearing ruler but i didn't want to bring more plastic into the house i like to recycle as much plastic as possible and this is one of my children's old school rulers I asked my husband if there's any way he could make me one and shoot him what it was and all he did was get a file and just make some notches all the way along in all different sizes and he said to mention whenever I mention this ruler that you can do this on a concrete block on a concrete step you could do it on a sharp bit of flint if you've got some flint near where you live or you know anything really with a sharp edge you can do that too and you know that will indent quite easily of course he used a file because well, he had that but you might not so what i am going to start by doing is i am going to start by tearing off one of these edges oh come on doesn't want to rip for me properly how pleasant there we go I'm going to take off this edge and I think I'm going to go down as far as here on this one take off this edge or I can use this piece elsewhere now when you're making this don't worry about going over the edges of your paper let me move some of these out of the way so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing don't worry about going over the edges of your paper here that will just be fine um, in fact it'll probably work a little bit better you could cut down the edges you could tear down the edges even if you wanted to i'll probably cut mine because i want my edges to be flush so yeah i will be going over a little bit on my edges course you can ink all the bits that you're sticking down as well if you wish but I won't be bothering with inking at the moment you know because I want to keep this as easy for beginners as possible and not all beginners have all of the supplies that we do Of course if you don't have a tearing ruler you can just use a normal flat edge of a ruler and I'm going to show you that as well. So I hope all you guys are okay, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing much better starting to feel quite a bit better I'm not top notch yet so I'm using the flat part of a normal ruler here so this is a normal children's ruler that you can get from anywhere and you still get a nice sort of tear to it there we go so that just shows you you can use any i'm sorry about all the um the shadows at the moment it is quite late at night that i'm doing this
sorry about this, I've gone really quiet. What I might do is finishing up this, because you can see how easy it is. It's literally, I'm taking off squares and I'm just roughly deciding where I want to put them using the papers to make a very collaged um, piece. So that once this is finished and once this is covered, we'll have book page on the inside and then collage on the outside. So I'm just gonna do that and I will be right back. Okay, hey, so it's all done now. So what I didn't say and I meant to say was, don't use the images for your collage. Keep it as plain as possible. Um, all the images on the collage, you can cut out and use these as embellishments throughout your journal. So keep your images separate from the cover right now. It'll all make sense later on. Now I'm going to leave this like this. Say you did want to ink it, you could go over with a little bit of um, vintage photo and just um, get all of the edges that way right now. But I'm happy with it. I don't want to change it. So what I'm going to do now is just trim up all of the edges. As you can see, I've gone all over the edges. You can see much better this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going in a little bit as well to make sure the glue is definitely on the edges there. Now you can do it this way if you wish or you could get a knife and a ruler. When I use a knife and ruler I usually use a bigger version of this. I'm just going to show you real quick with this one. And I would just get it to the edge here. Let me get my bigger one actually, that's better. Here we go. And I use these in here in the UK you can get um, I think six of these for a pound in the pound shops. So they're really cheap and they last ages because every time they go blunt, you just snap off a little bit of the blade and then you've got a sharp blade again. So there we go, quick and easy this way. I do most of my cutting with a blade and a ruler. I have got myself a cutting board, but like I did last time and I got rid of the cutting board, I don't use the thing. Just, oh, I keep trying to use it just so I can show people with a cutting board what to do, but I hate that. Just there's no point when a ruler and a blade works better for me, it doesn't for everybody though. So, there we go. Now, I want my corners rounded for beginners. There are different ways you can do this. This is what the end of my collage looks like so far, by the way. So if you want your corners rounded, there are ways you can do this as a beginner. You could take a penny and just draw around it here and then cut that off yourself. Or if you wanted, you could just take off the corners a little bit and that does give a finished look as well. But I'm just gonna pull in my corner rounder and just round the corners. I'm using a large corner rounder here in case anybody wants to know. But if you're a beginner, do feel free to just um, leave it also as is. You don't have to round the corner, I just want to. So then we are going to take this and we're going to fold it in half. Now mine's still a little bit wet for video purposes, I'm doing this. Um, but really you want to wait for yours to dry. Because otherwise everything's going to try to lift and move and, you know, you don't want that. Now I'm going to get my bone folder to squash, you don't have to. The same print stick you were just using does a bone folder's job. Okay? So don't feel like you need our tools, they're not necessary. I no longer have a bone folder, it is on the floor on the other side of my desk. So now I will be using the print stick. <laughs> so yeah, just use what you have and try not to worry about what it is you're doing. This has gone just a little bit wonky, but I think that's going to be okay in the gist of it all. Now on these, you can make your spine fatter if you want to. I'm going to leave mine just as is. I think it's going to be okay for the few pages that I'm going to be creating. But if you wanted to, you could just, um, you know, you could, what I was trying to say is you could fold either side very slightly. Um, 
it's not easy to do without a scoreboard so I'm not doing that today because I want to show beginners first timers how to do it but of course if you're more seasoned you know you, you can get your scoreboard out and just score that so the next thing we are going to do is decorate our cover so my cover is going to be a little bit bigger than yours if you've used A4 because this is slightly bigger than A4 this one so don't worry about the difference in size, it's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a few of my journaling cards next and have a little look at those and just see what I want on the front. Now I don't want one of the plainer ones, I'm kind of after one of these really decorative ones. So I'm just having a little look at what we've got. I really like the fairy house and the unicorn but I also like the trees I think I'm going to go for the fairy house and the unicorn for me yeah so first of all I'm going to cut out this fairy house Oh, actually before we do the cover we need to reinforce the spine I forgot about that now you're gonna need a little bit of fabric for this but you're not gonna need a lot and I can highly highly recommend using old bed sheet anything like that I've got for myself here some muslin and I'm just gonna use some thin muslin this is just gonna strengthen it I'm gonna use it on both sides and it will stop this here from tearing because the more you open and close it, it will tear straight down there eventually. So you do want some fabric. Like I say though, you don't need anything fancy. So the good thing about cotton bed sheet or muslin or cheesecloth, whichever you want to use, you can just snip and tear, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it at about, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half. Is that about an inch and a half? yeah it is but you know you don't have to measure there we go i'm just tearing that right the way down and when you tear it you get a really nice rough edge look to it so you know not only is it easier but it looks nice too so this one because i've torn it it's gone sort of rough all the way down because it's more of a cheesecloth than it is um, a cotton fabric so I'm just going to take it and just give it a little bit of a pull to straighten it all out now here I'm going to use three and one for my glue you don't have to use three and one at all don't feel like you've got to go out and buy an expensive glue tacky glue does do exactly the same job very well but it takes a little bit longer to dry and that is why I'm using the 3-in-1 because of my video. If you're using a heavier, heavier fabric, you can also use um, a glue gun if you wish, if you happen to have one. So all I'm going to do is just go down here with just a little bit of 3-in-1, making sure I get both sides. There we go. And I'm just going to use my finger to spread that out to stop any bleed through. Good tip for if you're using um, tacky glue too, just use your finger and just spread it. And then we can just pop on our fabric. And then just through the middle, I'm going to do that again as well. There we go, I'm just going to trim off the excess. Just put that over my 
uh, scraps and we have our journal cover with its fabric to protect it. Of course you can add thicker fabric, more fabric, anything, whatever you want. So next I'm going to cut out this um, journaling card here. round the corners on that so it ties in with the rounded corners of the journal itself now I want to emphasize the edges of both my journal and my journaling card which is going to be the front decorative piece now I'm going to be using my metallic gilding polish if you haven't got metallic gilding polish, maybe your children or grandchildren or maybe a shop near you has some of these children's paint sticks. They look like that. This one's a gold one. And you could equally use that. You may have children's paints you want to use. Another wonderful, wonderful product is eye makeup. What you can do is you can put a little bit of even PVA glue, just go along the edges of the PVA glue, like I'm going to with my gilding polish, and then straight away put your other finger in your eye makeup and then go over the glue and it'll pick up all that eye makeup on your finger and you'll get the same sort of effect. And just remember eye makeup is pigment and mica, okay, mica powder. So, and children are used to mine mica powders. So it's very important, we're very aware of what's in our products. This will have mica powder in, anything metallic tends to have mica powder, and children are used to mine that. I think if you're using something that is wrong, while fighting for the change, we should also be aware that we need to make the most out of everything. So if you've got makeup that has gone off, this is the perfect time, because that all has a use by date, it's a perfect way to use your makeup in a different way rather than just throwing it in the bin and um, making waste to all that makeup powder that such little children have, you know, damaged themselves for going down these mines. It is absolutely atrocious. It's really something I recommend everybody look into because there needs to be change, you know. So I'm not putting it everywhere, I'm just accenting little areas here and there, going across these little corners here. <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry, that was a sneaky sneeze. I do have allergies, I'm afraid. And of course, you know, being spring, my biggest allergies are at spring. So I've got some bits on there which I really love and I'm just going to go around this edge as well, getting bits and pieces here and there and making sure I definitely get those corners really well. And then just on the other side too, making sure we get the back as well as the front. So it all ties in nicely. Sorry, went off screen there a little bit. There we go. I'm just going to dry that before I put that down on my mat. It doesn't take long to dry this gild and polish, but if you've got something else, you might want to protect your surfaces if you're using something that isn't washable. Like this, but those paint sticks, those little paint sticks, they are children's ones that I've got. They work really well and they're washable. 
they turn into like a watercolour as well. And as you can see, I've got bits of gold everywhere. I'm not really worried. Honestly, most of that's going to get covered up, but if it doesn't, it just adds to the grunginess of it. So now putting this down, I'm having a little look, seeing if there's anything else I want to put around the edges. And I'm thinking I might go for more of that fabric. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to. You can just put down your image. You can put down a little word or something or anything else. Um, I'm just going to put down a few bits of fabric and make it look a little bit pretty. Or here's another one that I might use actually that are quite easy to get hold of. These are quite a cheap supply. Oh, and that is doily. I think I've got multiple here actually. I'm going to pick up multiple. There we go. Um, these doilies were on Amazon and I think I paid about £3 for a really massive pack. I mean, I had, I've had i got loads and loads. And I've got these because they don't have that white centre because I never use the white centre. I only use the lacy bits. So let's just grab some of these lacy bits. And what I'm going to do is get my tacky glue. And I am just going to pop some of this doily down in the background. But I want it to be quite random. I don't want it to be big pieces. So I want a piece there. Another piece just poking out. So yeah, I want these just to be poking out here and there. Have a nice big bit in this corner. From there you can build on it as well. And you can tear off any bits you don't like. And then we get a very torn, rough edge look. I really like that. I think that's really, really pretty. That really adds it to it. What I will do is just take off some of this here. There we go. Just so it doesn't get over the edge. And I'm going to glue all of that down. I've just got to get a needle and clear my bottle. Um, I have said this before, the radiators being on when we had a cold snap just recently with some snow, we're back to sort of spring weather again now, but the, having the radiators on in the cold snap does thicken up my glue. I've noticed it definitely, I don't know if it's got something to do with the area that I'm in in the UK, but I have noticed it's definitely related to... the weather so I do have to thin this out soon but we're just going to make do for now I'm sorry if it does get on your nerves I do apologize but it's one of those things and I'm not the only one suffering for this every crafter gets this so if you're new to this tacky glue or oh, it can be a real pain sometimes but it is a godsend it really does stick well and it happens with any brand of tacky glue um, they all block up one way or another it's the right place there we go now of course you can add other accents anything like that um, I might do it a later day I'm just trying to keep this tutorial really simple for people um, especially beginners so yeah I'm not going to but that pretty much is our journal cover all done so what I'm going to do is next time I'm going to show you how to make the holes to sew in your pages and then we're going to get decorating a couple of our pages as we go through and I'll show you also how many pages I'm going to use in this one and whatnot. So I hope you've had a bit of fun. I hope this has given you confidence to give it a go. Um, if you want to join my newsletter, my newsletter is only sent out once a month so you won't be spammed. And it is, um, you get a free printable on there. 
sorry, losing my thread a little bit. You do get a free, a free printable every single month. Um, this printable isn't on my Etsy for sale. It isn't to my members. It's just to anyone that's got a newsletter. So I literally, I make these. I keep them for myself to use them. I'm going to share them with you guys too. It's just my way to sort of give a little something to you guys. Um, also, um, if you did want to become a member and get free digitals, if you become either of my two members, you get access to the free digitals. If you become a member to my higher um, members bit, you get happy mail as well. Wherever you are in the world, you get happy mail. Um, the free printables on there, they are available to everybody, uh, to any, any members for free. They do sometimes get split up different to how they are on Etsy, but I do explain that on my posts and things. And um, you can have all the past ones that I've ever put on there and all the future. So say you join now, you've got all my past ones and all my future ones. I currently have about 20, nearly 20, I think, on there for you to download and print for absolutely free. This is massive. These are full kits that I'm giving you. I'm not giving you just a couple of one, two pages. The full kits, like these full kits, are all on there for free. And the reason I'm doing that is, um, it, again, it's to give back a little something. And it saves people money. When I first started out, I couldn't afford this. It was extortionate. And so, Doing this membership makes it a lot cheaper for people. You're, I mean, if you think about it, the cheaper membership is £3 a month. Although that will be going up soon because the charges have gone up. So I am going to have to put that up soon a little bit because um, sort of all the charges are different to what I thought they were. So I do have to change it a little bit because otherwise I end up not getting anything very much at all. But um, yeah, I mean, you're paying just a little bit and you've got all those printables that would usually cost a lot, lot more. Um, what else do we have? My Etsy store. My Etsy store is constantly changing. Um, I'm actually about to take some pictures of some things and they're all going up on Etsy. Um, yeah, so do keep checking out that Etsy store. Also, all my digitals are on there. I've got lots of different digitals. You could use any of my kits. Um, if you wanted to, you don't have to use these particular ones. Um, you also don't have to use mine. You know, of course, you can use whatever you want. Um, what else do we have? Is that everything? Yeah, I think I'm over. Oh, my website as well, if you want to check that out. That's where you sign up to um, the newsletter anyway. So you can just check it out. If you check it out from time to time, I will be putting up my artwork soon once I get my prints sorted. But I'll let you know about that nearer the time. Yeah, I think that's everybody. I do. I think that's everybody and everything. So I will see you next time. I hope you've had fun. Um, tomorrow, I have got my design team project. Woo! It's an Easter one. And I'm making it for myself, which is really exciting because I never make anything for myself. I always forget about myself and I keep making for everybody else. So... Yep, it's fun for me to have one. This one is a really nice one. And um, the kit is absolutely beautiful, beautiful Easter kit. So, yep, look forward to that. And I will see you then. Take care and try to stay well. Try to stay better than I'm doing because, you know, I'm a walking disaster. <laughs> see you again soon. All my love. Bye.